Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. So Toyota decided to drop the V6 engine from the 2023 Highlander and replacing it with a four-cylinder turbo. Many of my viewers have contacted me. They're asking what's going on. Could you comment? Could you tell us why are they dropping the V6 and why is Toyota jumping in into the turbo world, especially after they had some issues with the Tundra? Well, in today's video, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the new four-cylinder turbo engine. We're gonna dig into a little bit of a technical specification on it so you know what we're going into. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you my opinion about it and if you should be worried about this or not. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So the new four-cylinder engine, officially called the T24A FTS. And this time, Toyota dropped the V6, not for gas mileage, believe it or not, because the V6, the updated 2GR FKS, got decent gas mileage for as big of an engine as it is and the kind of power it makes. But this time, it's purely for emissions. Many folks ask, during the time of Toyota, when they replaced an engine, like when they went from the old V8 to the new V8, they're like, why did they do that? Because the new V8 makes almost the same power as the previous V8. It all has to do with emissions, folks. And 2023 is going to be a very tough year for all auto manufacturers because the government, at least in the U.S., and I'm pretty sure across the world as well, really raised the bar for the auto manufacturers. So they kind of had to rush to update things. And this has been probably cooking in the background for a while. But let's dig into the new engine. It's a 2.4 liter four cylinder direct injected and port injected. So it had the D4S system just like before. And the best way to describe it is it is a very, very close, almost identical engine to the A25A FKS, found in a Camry, RAV4, Venza, many, many models, even the Highlander Hybrid still has the A25A. If you've been watching my channel, you know a lot about this engine because we talk about it a lot. So it's not exactly the same engine. It's slightly smaller displacement, but the internals it, are identical and the technology is but there are some differences which we're going to cover in this video, starting with the mechanical stuff. Let's talk about it because this is where there is a few differences. So the first picture you saw when Toyota announced this, this engine is actually not all new for this. It started with the NX350, it's a 2.4 liter four cylinder turbo, but the first thing you notice is the engine cover. Throughout all the videos that I made in my channel, every time we talk about an engine cover, I tell you it is not just a beauty cover, it's there to insulate sound and just kind of keep the sound down, it has sound deadening material underneath it. But this time, it actually serves an actual purpose and you do not want to remove it and throw it out like some, some of my viewers said they did. This time, it actually channels air from the, from the cooling fan over the engine and over the turbo and then back down. It's like an air channel. If you look in this picture, the ch shape of it is like a channel. And if you look in this other picture from the NX350 engine, it actually has a kind of a passage, like a, like a duct almost. When the hood is closed, it becomes a duct and it channels air through. That is pretty cool. Many other manufacturers, especially our German brothers, have been using this for a long time and in a disastrous way a little bit but this is toyota they they took their time to start actually using the engine cover as some sort of a duct to cool things and to control airflow if you would moving on from the engine cover to the valve cover things change dramatically with the valve cover and there's a reason for it so the valve cover is still plastic Many people have their opinion on plastic valve covers, but so far from experience, I have not seen issues with the A25A. Many examples over 200,000 miles without any leaks or issues or cracks or breaks. So we're gonna call that one for now, okay. But the main difference is, see the A25A is direct and port injected at the same time. This is still the same, but the location of the direct injectors changed. It used to be right underneath the intake manifold on the side of the cylinder head. Now they moved it to the top, kind of similar to a Supra, kind of unfortunately similar to how BMW does things. 
But the difference is you have in four injectors at the top right next to the spark plug. So you have spark plug tubes and then four injectors. That's really the biggest difference here. And there's a reason for that too. They didn't just move it just because. Because the area where the direct injectors are in the A25A are used by something else, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So because of this change, the whole valve cover had to change. You have more holes, more things going on. But because of that, there is now two gaskets for the valve cover. Interesting design because kind of the middle area has a gasket separate from the outside, the full gasket of, of the valve cover. And that's because the middle area actually has no oil in it because that's where the injectors go. And instead of having spark plug tubes, they just have a gasket around that whole middle area and there's no oil goes to it. That's the main difference on the valve cover. Now the VBTI system, surprisingly to me, got changed completely. Because in the A25A, the exhaust side is controlled by oil. It has a little controller, sits on top of the timing cover. It's just this little plunger that pushes the oil control valve, which is inside the cam gear, and that changes the timing. Pretty simple design, they've been using it. Actually, the V6 that we're phasing out here does use that same system. Very simple, very bulletproof, really doesn't have many issues. But on the A25A, on the intake side, you had VVTI E, which uses an electric motor, just like you see here. It's kind of a complicated design, but it works brilliantly, and they do not have problems. Again, examples with over 200,000 miles have proven that. But now, with the turbo engine, they got rid of that. Now, both of them are oil controlled, just kind of old school, if you, if you ask me, but that's what they went with. Some people will be happy because some people were nervous about that motor going out, but now we don't have that in the new engine. It's just very, very simple. You have two electrical solenoids that activate the oil control valve, which is right there. You can actually remove that oil control valve without removing anything, just remove the solenoid. Super simple design, actually. Other than these changes in the mechanical design, everything else is very similar. You still have a variable oil pump that has a variable ratio, so oil is important. And looking at the picture, something is interesting. Looking at the picture that they published, it says 0W20, so this doesn't have 0W16 like the A25A, potentially because of the turbo. But the oil pump is still variable, so you do want to stick with the correct oil that is recommended in the owner's manual, just like the A25A. It is a chain-driven engine still, two chains, one for the cams, and then another little one that drives the oil pump, exact same spot. Basically, when you go from the block down, things are very, very similar to the A25A. Not exactly the same, but similar design. The cylinder head's different because of the inject direct injectors, but everything else is very, very similar. Still has the double front timing cover. There's, just like you see in this picture, this is actually an A25A, there's a cover, cams and guides and everything, then there's another cover. So that area between the cylinder head and the block is still floating. That is something that used to leak all the time where the cylinder head meets the block, meets the front cover. They got rid of that in the A25A and this engine also has the same thing, which is pretty cool. This engine also still has a vacuum pump in the back. I mean, everything else is very similar on the mechanical things. So the turbocharger on this new engine. The turbocharger on this engine sits actually in the back, not toward the front, toward the back, which is not the ideal place for turbos because that's really the area where all the heat concentrates, a little bit harder to service, but we have the airflow that goes to the back. That is really nice. And then the other thing is you can actually remove this turbo from this car without removing the engine. We looked at some other manufacturers, you have to actually pull the engine out to get the turbo. Not the case with this. It's a little bit involved in the oil drive models, you might have to pull the drive shaft, but it's doable in the car, which is good. Now, this is an oil-cooled and coolant cooled turbo, nothing special there. And believe it or not, things are a little old school with this turbo, because when we go to the Tundra and the problems that they have with the wastegate and all that, it was because the wastegate was electronically controlled. What opens and closes that wastegate to control the pressure of the turbo was actually electronically controlled. A motor that moves it back and forth and that's how it actuated. But in this one, it's vacuum operated. Very Toyota-like to go old school on things like that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They possibly learned a hard lesson with the Tundra. Now this one is vacuum operated. But the cool thing about it is, 
Because it is vacuum operated, it is a much simpler system, it's just a little diaphragm that pulls the wastegate open and closes it. And they have some a solenoid that you see in the picture that was published. It sits right on top of the air filter. That's actually the solenoid that controls the wastegate actuator. Very simple design, there are two vacuum hoses, really not much to it. But the cool thing is, when the turbo is not creating pressure, you're at lower RPM or you're just not using the turbo basically, the wastegate will actually fling all the way open. It will pull that flap all the way open, so basically bypassing the turbo. And now you don't have that back pressure from the turbo. You're not spinning it, spooling it unnecessarily. It just swings it wide open, exhaust goes right out, and it's not doing anything with the turbo. Pretty cool, small touch that actually makes a difference. And then when you need to create boost, like you're accelerating a little harder and higher load, you're going to close that, that flap and start building up pressure and spool that turbo up. Pretty cool design there, small touch, but it makes a big difference on reliability, believe it or not. Now the intercooler is an interesting setup because this is like kind of, this is a split where things are a little old school, a little new stuff and modern. The intercooler is not air to air, it is liquid to air. Very efficient, very compact, it's actually a good thing to have a liquid to air intercooler. The location of the intercooler is what's interesting and why they had to move the direct injectors to the top because it sits directly underneath the intake manifold. It's actually a good spot for it because again, it has part of that airflow that goes across to cool things from the fan with the engine cover that we talked about. It's actually right there at the fan. As soon as it hits, it hits it first and then it goes to up and down. So. It is a liquid to air intercooler, so there's two coolant circuits in this engine, just like the Tundra. Tundra has a similar thing. You have one coolant circuit for the engine, and then you have another coolant circuit for the intercooler. Now that coolant circuit for the intercooler uses a small electronic water pump, similar to that of the Priuses, you know, for the inverter pump. It's actually exactly the same design, same shape. I would imagine it might be crossing between them part-wise. But that's how it does that. Then it has another radiator in the front that just separate radiator. So you have three radiators, one for the engine, one for the intercooler, and then the condenser technically is considered a radiator as well. Let's talk about some other changes to this engine from the A25 to the T24A. So the first change is which will make many people very happy. This engine has no EGR, unlike the A25A. There's absolutely no EGR, nothing. Very welcome change because EGR systems in certain driving conditions, they could clog up and cause all the issues. If you don't believe me, ask third generation Prius owners. I'll tell you all about it. Well, the A25A does not have a history yet of EGR issues, but in the new engine, we don't have it. If you don't have it, you can't have its problems. So there is that. Another thing is the PCV system. It's a slightly different than the A25A, but similar at the same time. Let me explain. So they integrated the whole PCV system inside the intake manifold, which is very small. It's a lot smaller than that of the A25A. And the PCV valve still sits in the same spot as the A25A. There's no way to replace it without pulling the intake manifold out, which is smaller, so it makes it easier. It doesn't have the whole AGR thing attached to it, so it'll be a lot easier to service. The catalytic converter is an interesting one because it kind of loops around and comes back. Not your average, you know, standard catalytic converter. It just comes down because of the turbo. The turbo it doesn't have like doesn't allow the exhaust just to hook up to it to the bottom it has to go to the side so the catalytic converter is kind of this big behemoth that connects to the side of the turbo but otherwise it's just another catalytic converter but the good thing about that catalytic converter is is really tough to steal so i guess that's a benefit to that because it's tucked up right next to the turbo near impossible to cut it out and just get it out. It's just not gonna happen, so that is a big plus. And last but not least on the different things is there is no thermostat in this engine. So believe it or not, the A25A lately has been having some problems with the heated thermostat. They just go out. That's, I don't know why we have a heated thermostat, but the new engine does not have a thermostat at all. It has a similar coolant flow valve to that of the A25A, but it does not have a thermostat at all. So that is a plus because this engine will warm up very rapidly. 
I know some folks will be concerned, why can't we just have an old school thermostat that works? But actually, folks, the coolant flow system works much better. And it's just one big part that controls the coolant flow where it needs to go instead of having that mechanical thermostat. So should you worry that this engine is turbo now and every, all the reliability is going down? Short answer is no. Long answer, let's talk about it. Folks, this engine is heavily based on the A25A, which has a great, great track record so far. So much. This 2022 Camry Hybrid behind me is my personal car. It has the A25A. Now, the turbocharged side, that remains to be seen. However, majority of other manufacturers have been doing turbos for a very long time. If you felt like Toyota was never going to do turbos, I'm sorry to say that this, we saw this coming. It was just a matter of time. They actually held up as much as they can. The problem here is not gas mileage. The problem here is pure emissions. 2023 is going to be a very tough year. And up to 2024, 25, things are really getting tough here with emission standards from the government, the requirements for emissions from the EPA. That's just how it is. And the manufacturers have to comply unless they want to pay ridiculous fines here. So. The V6 is gone. As much as I will miss the V6, the new engine is looking good because of the A25A. I think the A25A has been great. If the new T24A behaves the same, we are doing really good. But one thing I will do here to help potential future buyers of the turbo engines from Toyota, pretty soon here on the channel, I will be filming a video what not to do with your turbo engine from day one so you would not have issues and you would see this engine last the usual 250 300,000 miles and hopefully more that is coming up in the future and before we end up this video i will say this they potentially will have small issues the first you know month two three to play it safe wait your six to eight months until they work out the issues and if you have to buy the car you have a warranty don't worry it's it this is what the Tundra crowd did to themselves, actually. They kind of put themselves in this position where this is not a good truck. I bought a lemon, this and that. No, you're going to get it fixed and life is good. That's just how it is. That's why cars have warranties. So if you don't want to deal with this, wait the six to eight months and life is good. And before we wrap up the video, I want to say one thing. So in Toyota's press release, they said the new... 2.4 liter engine has 265 horsepower and uses balance shafts for super smooth performance. Many folks will look at this and read into it. Let's just clarify, because that was a typical marketing kind of passage. It makes absolute no sense. It, it, makes, it makes them doesn't, don't look good in the eyes of someone like me, and now it will be you. Because the A25A has a balance shaft. The 2AR FE, the engine before it, has a balance shaft. The 2AZ FE, the engine, four cylinder engine before that, has a balance shaft. And the engine before that, the 5S FE, also has a balance shaft because majority of four cylinder engines have a balance shaft so they wouldn't rattle the car and rattle your skull. That's just that statement was kind of interesting to see there because I don't remember the last time I saw a four cylinder doesn't have a balance shaft from Toyota. Perhaps with some of the smaller engines, but not the major four cylinders, let's put it this way. So if you read that, there's nothing new about the balance shaft. The majority of these four cylinders have a balance shaft. So I don't know why they use that as a marketing thing in their press release, but in case you're wondering, now you know. It's nothing special. They all four cylinders have a balance shaft, or at least majority of them. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.